Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Olivia. I am an educator here at the Aquarium in the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and it's Halloween today. So today we are going to be talking about some spooky seas. We get to talk about the deep sea. So I'm really excited for you all to join us today. Um, we're going to be making lots of observations. We're all going to be scientists today. So if you have any questions or any observations that you want to share, as always, we encourage you to text us in, or if you are not watching us live right now, it's Monday morning at 9 a.m. on Halloween, so October, or, yeah, October 31st. Um, if you're here live, go ahead and text us 562-286-1838, and if you're not watching us live, feel free to send us an email at live at lbaop.org. Or if you have a longer question, feel free to use that email as well. I'm not alone here in the studio. I do have my friends Soraya and Morgan with me. They are behind the computer screen. They are controlling everything that's behind me. So everything you see on the screen, they're also gonna be letting me know when someone texts in. So feel free to text in those observations and any of those questions that you might have. I would love to answer it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Again, today we are talking about the deep, deep sea. Hmm, so when we think about the deep sea, what might we think of? What might we think of? Do we think about the things that we maybe we see at the beach? No, probably not the things we see at the beach. So if we think about the deep sea, yeah, it's gonna be everything that's really deep, deep down in the ocean. So like a couple miles down in the ocean, which is a long way down. So what do you think are some things that maybe you'll notice in the deep sea? What are some animals that you might think that live down there in the deep sea? Let's go ahead and take a look. This picture right behind me is from Noah and it's a picture of a sort of um, machine or robot kind of down there looking at some things in the deep sea. But what are some things that you may notice about the picture? What is this sort of robot thing looking at? This is called an ROV, which is a remote operated vehicle. So what is it looking at or what does it have? You might notice this really bright spot right here, this light here and some rocks maybe. But what about here? Lots of darkness. Yeah, it's super, super dark in the deep sea. So it's, it's so far down that the light from the sun doesn't shine through all the way. So it's super dark. So the only way that we can see things is when this ROV has a light that comes off from it. Let's see if we can take another look at a different video or picture that we have of the deep sea. And we're going to make some more observations about things that we notice in the deep sea. Let's see. Ah, there's a nice video. So again, this is gonna be one of those ROVs, that remote operated vehicle, taking a look at the habitat of the deep sea. So what are some things that you notice? Ooh, there's a red little fish right there. <laughs> but what colors do you notice? Other than the red fish that's super bright right in the middle, what are some things that you notice? Ooh, maybe we can pause it right there. I'm not sure if we can take a pause at it. We can pause the video right there, perfect. Yeah, so what do you notice that these things right here? Do You see those two red dots kind of hanging out right there? So those are two dots that come off of the ROV, or a remote operated vehicle, that help us determine the size of things. So we, as humans, can't go down there, so we have to have those ROVs go down there for us, and so they, these two dots will help us figure out what size some of these animals are, or some of the other life that lives down here is. But what are some other colors that you notice here in the video, is it really, really bright or really dark? Hmm. So if you've tuned into some of our aquarium online academies before, you may hear us talk about kelp forests or coral reefs. This one looks pretty different. So this one's really kind of dark. You see a lot of sort of brown colors, some muted colors, so maybe some white, some pale colors, except for this red animal and these red dots. Hmm, great observations. We're noticing Lots of sort of darkness, that fish is swimming off. So the red color that we see, so I know we said a lot of the colors that we saw were really pale. But we had those that red fish and those two red dots hanging out there. Oh, there's another great picture. What colors do you notice? Maybe some green down there, some blue over here. Hmm. Yeah, so all these rocks too, all these different colors. So some animals in the deep sea, a lot of them are going to be sort of that pale color because they'll help them blend in. But when you get really deep down into the deep sea and it gets really dark, 
the last sort of visible color that people are able to see or animals are able to see is red. So red is going to be another common color that animals will use as camouflage. Ooh, so this is a great picture so we can see sort of how dark it gets in the deep sea. So this is what we're sort of used to. This is um, sea, right at sea level and then about 200 meters below. And then we get even further down, we'll see a couple of different fish and we'll notice the, the sun's rays, the light rays kind of disappear a little bit. And then even more so as we get even deeper down here into the midnight or um, aphotic zone. So sunlight here does not come through all the way. So what we'll notice is a lot of those, those animals are gonna be really pale in color or really muted tones, but we'll have some of those really bright red animals too, because red is gonna be the last color that things will notice. All right, so we'll also talk a little bit about some other challenges that animals might have down here. So if, we, we, if we're standing out here on earth and we sort of put our hands on our shoulders and push down, we actually have pressure pushing down on us. So we have the pressure of the atmosphere pushing down on us. Now, maybe if you were to swim into a pool, if you were going swimming or if you had swim lessons and you dive all the way down to the bottom and try to touch the bottom, you'll notice that there's a lot more pressure on you. Maybe you have to pop your ears because there's lots of pressure down there. So that's gonna happen even more if you're diving down into the deep sea. You have so much sort of water stacked up right on top of you that it's a lot of pressure pushing you down. So that's gonna be another challenge that some of these animals might have living in the deep sea. Now it said that if you were to take about this size, maybe like the size of a postage stamp or the size of this okay sign. So if you were to make this sort of sign and you were to put it, stick it onto your body like a postage stamp, it said that when you're in the deep sea or about two, like a couple miles down into the ocean, the amount of pressure in that one little area is about the size of the weight of a school bus. So if you were to put a big old school bus in this amount of area, that's how much pressure is on your body. So that's why we don't go down into the deep sea. That's too much pressure for us. We are not built for that, but there are animals that are built for that. We are built for the amount of pressure that we have here on land. So just like that pressure that we feel, we may not feel it here because we're used to it, but if we were to go down into the ocean, maybe you swam in the pool and went all the way down to the bottom and your ears popped, that's sort of, we're kind of adapting to that, but these animals have those adaptations where they are built to swim down here and live down here and survive in the deep sea where there's lots and lots of pressure. Uh, there's another great picture. What are some things that we notice here? Maybe we're looking at some of the colors. Again, you're welcome to text us in if you have any questions at all about the deep sea. Or if you want to make some observations, feel free to text us and we'll go ahead and put that text line down there at the bottom again. Ooh, here's another picture. So again, that number to text us at is 562-286-1838 or email us live at lbaop.org. But what are some things that we notice? We talked a little bit about the color. You'll notice a lot of sorted browns and muted tones like these little crabs here are almost white. Ooh, so these right here, this picture that we're looking at right here, these are some deep sea mussels. We have lots of little crabs sort of living on them as well. So we're talking a little bit about challenges and adaptations. Now, maybe you've heard of the word adaptations before. So let's think about what adaptations means. Hmm. Adaptations are gonna be sort of the thing that animals have to help them survive in their ha habitat. So there's that word adaptation. It's a thing that animals have to help them survive in their habitat. Now, when we say survive, we mean the ability to maybe find their food, the ability to avoid becoming food, and the ability to mate. So now if we're animals living in the deep sea, how might we find our food? How might some animals avoid becoming food? And how might some animals try to find someone to mate with or someone to reproduce so they can have more babies, so they can have more of that species? What are some things that we think of? Hmm. Now the deep sea, I said, is really dark. So how, if we were an animal and we were to close our eyes because it's really, really dark, how would we find another animal to mate with? What are some things that we think these animals might have? Maybe we could take a look at one of the animals. Ooh, so this is another animal. 
This is a flower hat jelly. Now, flower hat jellies reproduce a little bit differently. They don't need to exactly find another mate. They actually don't have any eyes. So they don't have eyes. They don't need to be able to see or find their mates. But you'll notice that it's what color? Kind of bluish, maybe green color. Yeah, why do you think that might help them? Hmm. How might the blue color help them? So you'll all, you may also notice that lots of deep sea animals have what's called bioluminescence. Now that's a really big word, bioluminescence. So let's sort of break it down. I'm actually gonna go over here to my camera so we can write out the word. Let's see. We're gonna write out bioluminescence so we can break it down a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's make sure we can see. There we go. Perfect. We're going to write out bioluminescence. Wait, it's kind of too bright. There we go. Now we can see. There we go. Bioluminescence. That is a big word that we are learning today, bioluminescence. So let's break it up. When we hear the term or the first part of the word bio, what do we think of? Maybe you're thinking like biology, maybe you take a biology class. So that first part of the word bio means life. And what do we think of when we hear luminescence or something that illuminates? Hmm. Maybe something that has light, like a candle or a light bulb, something that illuminates, something that is bright. So when we have bioluminescence, we have animals with light or life that glows. So that is going to be the word, that new word we're learning today, bioluminescence. Everyone say it with me. Bioluminescence. Awesome. So that's what that flower hat jelly has. Maybe we can go back to that picture. Ooh, and this fish too. Maybe we'll see how they sort of glow. They have that green color. Yeah, we have lots of deep sea animals that have bioluminescence. So that is maybe one adaptation they have that helps them find some other animals. Ah, so this shrimp right here, this is called a panda lid shrimp. And they are actually very cool. So bioluminescence is a chemical reaction that these animals have that help them glow. So this shrimp in particular has the ability, and it's kind of weird, where if they're trying to avoid a predator or someone who's trying to eat them, they're trying to avoid them, they can actually sort of expel or spit out some of that protein just like this, or some of that protein that they have that causes that chemical reaction that leaves sort of a cloud of glowingness almost similar to how an octopus will use ink to squirt at its predator to swim away. This shrimp can use their proteins that illuminate to spit it out of their mouth and glow, and that helps them swim away. So if they have a predator, it, that bioluminescent cloud um, will distract them, and they can swim in an opposite direction, which is very cool. This, is, again, is called a pandalid shrimp. Ooh, I hear we have a question from one of our followers. Ooh, excellent question. So the question was, how do the fish stay in the deep, deep sea? Is that what, right? Okay, so why don't they float to the surface? Excellent question. How do they stay in the deep sea? I'm actually going to have to ask my friend Sarai to see if she can look up exactly what they have, but they are sort of built for that. They are built a little bit differently, so they have adapted over time to stay in the deep sea. So they will, they don't have, they won't rise to the top. Yeah, that's a great question. Maybe their swim bladder is built a little bit differently where they won't um, rise all the way to the top. That's an excellent question. Awesome. Yeah, they wouldn't be able, they're, st they're so used to all the pressure that's at the bottom of the ocean that if they were to swim up, they wouldn't survive. They would not do well. Yeah, they're, they're too used to all of the pressure that sort of weighs down on them. But for us, we're not used to that, so we wouldn't do well down there. Awesome. Excellent question. 
we're going to go ahead and take a look at a, another one of my favorite sort of ecosystems in the deep sea. Now, this is called a whale fall. We're going to take a look. First, we're going to put up a video um, of a whale fall. So we'll see it. Take some a uh, look um, at the video once. Sorry, I sent my friend Soraya on a bit of a hunt to go find it. But we're going to take a look at this whale fall. And a whale fall is going to be, we're used to seeing those big whales out in the ocean swimming around. A whale fall is when a whale dies. It does sometimes sink to the very bottom of the ocean. And it causes an ecosystem or almost like a plethora or abundance of food for, these, for animals like scavengers to feed off of. So we'll take a look. There we go. So this video is from Monterey Bay. But here is a picture or a video of this whale fall. So what are some things that we might notice? So this right here in the middle is going to be the whale, the skeleton of the whale. But what are some other things that we notice here? There's lots of animals. Yep, we have lots. What is about, what's this animal right here? Lots of, look at it swimming around. Lots of octopuses on this animal, on the whale fall. Ooh, what colors do we notice too on this whale fall? We see some fish over there as well, around. So what colors are we noticing? Are they still sort of that muted color, maybe white, dark colors? There's a zoomed in video. And look, we see those two dots, similar to the two dots that we saw in that last video, on this ROV that's gonna help us see the size of some of these animals. There we go. And you see all this frilly stuff kind of on this, um, on the scales, I'm sorry, the skeleton of this whale fall. You would think that that's maybe like moss growing on it. That's actually not moss at all. That's actually a type of animal. We call them zombie worms because they eat at the skeleton of this whale. Yeah, so we see lots of animals. There's a great picture of our ROV. So this, again, is our remote-operated vehicle taking a look down there in the deep sea at this whale fall. Awesome. We'll actually go ahead. Maybe we can pull up another picture of an ROV sort of out of water because they are really important to help us explore what's in the deep sea. Now, when we think of whales, we think of them as being really big because, for the most part, they are really big. But if we're thinking them in terms of the size of the ocean, they're probably really small. So they're really big compared to us, but really small compared to the size of the ocean. Now, we don't always have a chance to see the whale falls because the ROV can only see a certain amount of area. And so we just happened upon that video, happened upon that whale fall where we were able to see it. Because if we're searching the whole ocean, we may not know exactly where that whale fall is. So just like this video, we only have a little bit of light in that deep sea or the ocean is so, so big that we may not be able to know exactly where a whale fall is or exactly where certain animals are. So we are still exploring a lot of the deep sea. There's a lot that we still have not discovered because we can only see a very small portion of it at a time. Awesome. But we'll go ahead back, sorry, to that video or that picture of that ROV sort of out of the water. There it is. Ooh, this is really big. So this is the, that ROV that goes all the way down. What are some things that we notice on it? Hmm. Lots of mechanical things. Lots of things that I don't know what they do. <laughs> but this arm right here, we'll see this arm. There we go. This arm here. What do you think that might help them with? Almost looks like it has these little pinchers. So what might that help them with? Maybe if we needed to gather or collect things from the deep sea that we want to observe more. So as scientists, we'll make lots of observations, we'll collect samples and collect different things that we can learn about as we bring them back up to the surface. So these are lots of different pictures of different things that we have on this ROV. Maybe we need to take some water samples. So these help us take water samples so we can see what chemicals are things that are in the deep sea. So that's what that'll help us. Let's take a look at what controls. We have a lot of electrical stuff, a lot of mechanical stuff going on. It's all really complicated to, for me to understand it all. But we'll take a look to see what those screens look like when they're controlling this. So again, this is a remote operated vehicle. Think about it sort of how you would play maybe a video game or if you're playing something on the computer. 
We have remotes that help us. Maybe it's a little controller like a PlayStation or maybe it's a joystick. So we have remotes that help us control. That's exactly what they're doing here. You can even see they have remotes here, little joysticks here, lots of different buttons and lots of screens to help them control that ROV, help them know exactly where they're going and exactly what they're looking at. Here, I think we're looking at maybe the different sort of habitat or that structure in the ocean. So we have, just like how we have on land, we all have mountains and valleys and things like that. Same thing that we have in the ocean, just like that. So that almost looks like it's measuring this, the heights of different um, things in the ocean. Awesome. Yeah, so lots of great videos. So those ROVs help us tremendously to see what's in the deep sea, just like that. And they're really, really big. Awesome. So again, if you have any questions about the deep sea, feel free to text us in. Um, we'll go ahead and put that number back down there on the bottom. But we'll, we'll also take a look. So there's that number again. 5228681838 or email questions to live at lbaop.org. Did we have another question come in? Who drives the ROV? Excellent question. Scientists will drive ROV. I'm sure engineers help drive the ROV. Um, lots of different organizations. The National Marine Sanctuary, I think, is one of the organizations that helped with this ROV. So lots of different people, lots of training sort of goes behind this. I do not drive it. It would be cool if I did. Maybe one day you can drive one. That would be very fun. Awesome. Uh, oh, so sometimes there are people. There we go. So there's. So we do have sometimes have manned missions. If you see this bubble is specifically built for going down into the deep sea to hold all of that pressure away from the people because we are not used to it. So there are sometimes people that will go down there to take a look at some of the animals that we have there in the deep sea. So with that, we'll go ahead and explore one of the animals in the deep sea. We're going to actually take a look at the angler fish to see if uh, we can notice any of the adaptations that we talked about earlier. So some of the challenges that we have in the deep sea have us to need adaptations. So some of the challenges are going to be the darkness of the deep sea, all the pressure in the deep sea. Ah, uh, there's that anglerfish. So what are some things that we notice? What about the color of it? What do we notice? It's really dark, all black. What about this right here? Maybe you've heard of an anglerfish, so you know what this is. This is its angler, and it's going to be the part of their body that lights up or uses that bioluminescence to light up. And that actually helps them attract some of their food. So that bright light right at the very top attracts lots of their food to go right towards their face. They're attracted to that light and that helps them eat. Awesome. Very cool. Ah, you may also notice. So a lot of times when we're looking at different animals and different fish, we look to see sort of where their mouth is placed and in what angle it's at. You'll notice that this angler fish, its mouth is pointed upwards because that'll help them. If the light is shining here, their food is gonna go here. And so their mouth is pointing up to help them eat. So you'll notice that with lots of different animals, sort of where their mouth is placed, will help them figure out what food that they might eat. Ooh, here's another fish that we're taking a look at in the deep sea. So what are some things that we'll notice? Now I mentioned that because it's really dark and it's almost like if we were to close our eyes that it, maybe they don't have eyes. So maybe it's really dark for them all the time. They don't find a need for any eyes. On the other hand, sometime, sometimes animals in the deep sea have really big eyes. So sometimes those really big eyes will help them see when it's really dark. So this fish right here, there we go. So there is an animal that's got really, really big eyes. So this right here is a bobtail squid. Well, and we'll notice that it's also that red color that we talked about a little bit earlier. And they have really big eyes that help them see in the deep sea, which is really cool. So, so they'll also have, so for the darkness, they'll either have no eyes or they can bioluminesce or so they can glow. That helps them see maybe like this one, or they'll have really big eyes that help them. 
Um, but with, we'll go back a little bit to the bobtail squid because like we mentioned earlier about the deep sea, there's a lot of pressure down there. So a lot of pressure. So how might um, animal adapt to that sort of environment where there's lots of pressure, lots of water pushing down on them? Well, you'll notice that their body is actually really, really squishy. So maybe that helps them sort of adapt to that environment. Their body is squishy, so it doesn't get squished by all the pressure that's down there. Awesome. Now we do have a couple of more minutes left. So again, if you have any questions at all about the deep sea, if you would like to ask, feel free to text us in. But I do take a last look. The whale fall video that we had a chance to see earlier, they went in actually had a chance to go back they found that same whale fall in 2020 so we'll take a look to see what it looked like a year later and we're going to notice some things maybe look a little bit different and maybe look a little bit the same so let's see if we can get i'm sending my friend sarai on a hunt all day today so there's that video again the national marine sanctuary for monterey bay they went down a year later to find that whale fall let's see there's that rov with their lights Shining down. There's those two lights that help us figure out what we're looking at. Let's see if we can find this whale fall a year later. Hmm. Or what are some other observations that you notice here? Ooh, so it's really dark. We have those two lights helping us to see the distance between things or how big things are. There's that whale fall. Ooh, so what are some things that we notice that are different about it? Are there the same amount of animals? Are they the same animals that are there? Or are they different animals? Let's see what we notice. Does it look like the same amount of bones or skeleton that was down there the first time? Or is it a lot less? I know we talked about those zombie worms that eat at, there's a side by side. So we talked about those zombie worms that'll eat at the bone there we go look at all that we have lots of ribs this is again in 2019 and when they went back in 2020 missing lots of different parts of it you'll also notice maybe in, in one of the clips you'll notice so it, i mentioned earlier that it is a whale so it does have baleen so you might notice in part of it that the baleen may be missing oh now i'm on the wrong there we go look there's another fish maybe a different fish than the ones we saw earlier but look at all that. This right here, this is really cool. So we talked about that arm that that ROV uses. This arm is actually going to be gathering some of that baleen. So it's gathering some of the baleen so that we can bring it back up. There we go. Ooh, question coming in. How long do whales live? Great question. It depends on the whale. Some whales can be about 45 to 50 years old, like a humpback. Or I think a blue whale is... 60 or 70 years old okay so the oldest whale my friend morgan's helping me out the oldest whale is a was actually 110 years old so they can live for a long long time sort of like humans or even longer great question that came in but this is a great video awesome so we are just about running out of time but again if you have any questions feel free to text us last minute questions or send us an email we learned so much today about the deep about some of the challenges that some of these animals have lived see so it's really cold there's lots of pressure what is baleen excellent question baleen so baleen whales have baleen there's two different species there's baleen whales and there's tooth whales this is baleen baleen whales don't have any teeth so they use baleen to eat their food they'll actually open their mouth really wide and they'll take a big gulp of food and water and then they'll close their mouth and they're able to filter out the water. So they'll push the water out of their mouth and they filter feed. And so then the food is left in their mouth. So by swallowing the, the water and their food, they just push out the water that's left. And then they are only stuck with food because the food can't swim up between the plates of the baleen. Excellent question. But this is what this is um, humpback whale baleen. So it sort of looks like this. It's made of keratin, which is the same thing that our hair and fingernails are made out of. Excellent. Awesome. We learned so, so much today about the deep sea and about different whales. We had excellent questions. We learned about challenges, adaptations, some different those different animals. We learned a new word, bioluminescence. 
So overall, I had so much fun today talking to you all about the DPC. I hope you had just as much fun, and I hope you have a very happy Halloween. Thanks again, and feel free to join us again next time. Bye!